and this was a case report that we had published uh, in the Journal of Neuropsychiatry and Clinical Neurosciences earlier this year. This is a patient of ours who was 57 years old and he was in a motor vehicle accident uh, on June 11, 2009. And he suffered a traumatic brain injury, mild. He had neuropathic headaches. He also had multiple musculoskeletal injuries. He had a lot of neuropsychiatric problems from his mild traumatic brain injury, uh, as most of our patients do who come to our clinic. And he got a uh, MRI of the brain, and the radiologists interpret that as normal. And that's very typical for our patients that the radiologist who does the visual inspection, the traditional approach, doesn't see any abnormalities in the brain. That's the most common thing we see with MRIs uh, in our patients. Uh, and it was around this time, over the last five years or so, we've been fortunate to have 3.0 Tesla MRIs, which are, have a more powerful 3 Tesla magnet. Uh, they're better than the older 1.5 Tesla MRIs, which had a weaker magnet. With the stronger magnets, we can get better picture of the brain, higher resolution, and see smaller things. Um, so we did the more powerful MRI on our patient. The radiologist now did see two small little white matter hyperintensities. They're basically little white spots um, on a certain type of MRI uh, sequence. But they're nonspecific, so might have been due to traumatic brain injury, might have been due to something else. It's hard to tell. So that, that, wasn't, a, that wasn't a lot to go on. And there are no signs of atrophy seen by the radiologist. So then we did a NeuroQuant standard analysis. And we found that in our patient, the hippocampal volume was 0.29% of intracranial volume. Well, that's less than the first normative percentile. That means that 99% of normal people would have a bigger hippocampus than that, uh, or hippocampi, left and right. And so our patients' hippocampi were very small uh, and abnormally small. And we thought that in his case, that was probably due to the traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury is generally well known to cause hippocampal atrophy or shrinking. Hippocampus is very important for memory, especially short-term memory. And he, like most of our patients, had a lot of problems with short-term memory. Okay, now I want to tell you about a NeuroQuant extended analysis. This is something we've developed here at the Virginia Institute of, Neuro, uh, Virginia Institute of Neuropsychiatry. And it goes a little bit above and beyond the NeuroQuant standard analysis. First of all, we use the uh, ADNI database, which is the same one that Cortex Labs initially used to develop NeuroQuant. We took 20 normal control subjects from that database uh, and measured their brain volume using NeuroQuant. The mean age of that group was 68.3 years. So this was a relatively old group, older than our typical patients. Uh, that is a limitation when we compare a younger patient to our group of older normal controls. But it's a conservative limitation. Because if our patient, if our younger patient has a smaller brain volume than the older controls, we can be confident that that patient does have abnormally small brain volume. Um, and I say it's a limitation because in, as, as people age, the brain shrinks normally. Um, not much in your 20s, 30s, 40s, a little bit in your 50s, more in your 60s, and by the time you get in 70s and your 80s, it starts shrinking more. And so age is important uh, when you think about understanding brain volume. Um, so this limitation means if we don't find signs of brain atrophy in our younger patients, we're not so sure if the patient really didn't have brain atrophy or maybe our normal control group was too old. But if we do find brain atrophy in our patients, we can be confident that that's a valid finding. We then, um, took 15 brain regions uh, measured by NeuroQuan and measured those in our normal controls so that we could compare all of those to our patient's data. And by having this database, we're able to compare any of our adult patients to um, 
are group of normal controls, whereas with the Neuroquant standard analysis, usually they limit it to patients. Last time I checked, it was uh, patients about 50 years and older. A little bit of, about our experience at the Virginia Institute of Neuropsychiatry with Neuroquant. Um, we've been doing this work a couple of years. We've done about 80 Neuroquant analyses so far. Regarding our quality control, we, we have several steps for in, to ensure good quality with this uh, type of work. And first of all, before we collect the MRI data, we communicate with the radiologist or uh, the head radiology technician at the MRI center to let them know what they're doing because Neuroquan is uh, still relatively new type of uh, technology. And we tell them they need to set up their MRI scanner exactly the right way uh, with all the little buttons turned the right way. We tell them um, to go on the Cortex Lab Neuroquan website and find for their particular scanner the exact settings they need to use and to, and to use those. Also, the Neuroquant's automated software has several uh, checks that it does automatically. And so if you try to give it MRI data that's not done the right way, and at a minimum it needs to be T1 sagittal non-contrast 3D, if it doesn't have one of those uh, parameters, the software will kick it out and it won't do any Neuroquant analysis. If it's got those, the software will will do the analysis, but there are still other parameters that need to be set right. And if you didn't set them right, what you're going to get back is not going to be as good as it could be. It may not be good enough. That's why we say you really need to set all the parameters correctly. Then the Neuroquant software analyzes the brain region, regions, sends the data back to us, and then we look at each brain region um, in at least two different planes through the or sections through the brain, making sure that the computer software identified the region accurately. And if it didn't, we'll make a note and we won't use that uh, brain region for any volume analysis or comparison. We then take the brain volume data and we put it through um, a, we call it the factory. It's uh, uh, Excel system of Excel spreadsheets that uses formulas to find averages and to determine uh, means and standard deviations so we can determine whether or not uh, brain regions are uh, abnormally small or not in our patients. And we also um, check all of these numerical results to make sure that they make sense and that they match what we're seeing in the brain images. This is an example of one of our Neuroquan extended reports that we generate here at the Virginia Institute of Neuropsychiatry. This is page one of a typical Neuroquan extended report. And you can see that um, we have 15 brain regions in the left column. We measure the left volume and the right volume of each region. And then toward the right hand side of the table, we, we measure asymmetry, which again is how big is the left side versus the right. And if a patient has abnormally small volume in one of these regions, or if they have abnormal asymmetry, so if their brain regions uh, are more asymmetric than would be normal, then these are flagged uh, with bold blue font and an asterisk. So you can quickly, easily identify what brain regions are abnormally small in the patient. Next. This is just a zoom in on the top half of the page one of the Neuroquant Extended Report. And this is a zoom in on the bottom half. Okay, this is page two of our Neuroquant Extended Report. And in the top part, we have a key about what things in the table mean and about how we define uh, abnormality. The most important part of that definition is, again, with that bell curve, if it falls below the lowest five percentile, um, that means abnormally small brain volume. And that, by the way, that's for brain parenchymal regions. Parenchymal means tissue. Um, there are also ventricular spaces in the brain. The, as you may know, the ventricles are regions in the brain which are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. And when the brain atrophies uh, after an injury or for other reasons, um, 
as the, the ventric as the brain tissue shrinks, the ventricles get bigger and it takes up the, the leftover space in the brain. So ventricular enlargement or increase of CSF regions in the brain is an indirect sign, but a very good indirect sign of atrophy of the adjacent brain parenchymal tissue. And so with our NeuroQuant extended report, if we see ventricular size increasing above the 95 percentile compared to normals, then we also identify that uh, as an uh, abnormal uh, region. Okay, we also have on this page two of the extended report, our inspection for uh, image quality and if there are any segmentation errors, they're listed there. And then at the bottom, we have a narrative summary of the positive findings. This is where we take the findings in blue bold from page one that were abnormal and summarize them um, on page two so you have another way of understanding what the abnormalities were. Okay. And this is the bottom half of page two of the extended report.